Hi, I'm here today with Kat Casey from CS Disco. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence as it relates to e-discovery and document review. Uh, Kat, can you tell us just a little bit about what your firm does to help speed up the review process and lower costs for clients? Absolutely. Um, we're a cloud-native AI-powered e-discovery company, um, and what that means is we've got vast amounts of elastic computational power that we can use to run a myriad of different types of analytics on data to, to supercharge your searching and dramatically reduce the amount of time it takes you to get to that key actionable evidence. So we've kind of flipped everything on its head. Instead of being a question of how quickly can I read through all of this data, it's how laparoscopically can I surgically find all of that key information. And the results that we're seeing are, are, are pretty resounding, up to 60% reduction in time to get to that key evidence, um, freeing up attorneys to, to get back to what they went to school for, the practice of law. It's uh, pretty compelling. Uh, we've had some pretty interesting additions, including uh, even today we just announced the, um, I think, the first true AI in e-discovery mm -hmm. with AI model sharing. Basically, with each iteration, with each type of case that you conduct with Disco, our algorithms are getting smarter. We're, we're extracting insights and building a more robust taxonomy and analytic structure to parse data, which is going to yield better and better results for our clients. It's, it's truly exciting. So we've come a long way from the early days when the attorneys wanted everything printed mm -hmm. and Bates labeled before they looked at it to it now moving ahead using TAR, technology assisted review, like artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. which fits into that, correct? 100%. We, we have a continual active learning model, so it's uh, more reinforcement learning than a standard supervised learning model. Basically, with from the coding of document one, our algorithm's getting smarter and making recommendations on highly likely to be similar documents. And we battle test um, the algorithm on an ongoing basis, um, whether it is the uh, an affirmative or a negative for a suggested document, the algorithm learns more. And because of that, we prioritize the most relevant information quickly, and people are able to then accelerate their review spades by up to, I think we've had over 180 uh, docs per hour. So it, it's mm. pretty compelling. Um, and this is just the beginning. So, so your platform's all in the cloud, correct? So mm -hmm. co companies or law firms, they need no infrastructure mm -hmm. other than a browser? 100%. Um, the, the nice thing, in my prior life, I, I ran a global e-discovery program, and I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to keep pace, just to have storage, just to have basic mm -hmm. replication and backup and all of that. Now, even a small firm all the way up to an AmLaw One firm or a massive you know, Fortune One company, they can have the same robust technology without having to set up a data center, without having to invest a ton of money. It's, um, it lets everyone level up and, and mm -hmm. have, I think, a better, uh, better experience throughout the e-discovery process. So one, one of the challenges a lot of my clients always have is they have a need to understand what the costs are going to be and to be able to communicate mm -hmm. to their client those expectations so that they're not throwing their client on the e-discovery roller coaster of non-controllable bills. Mm -hmm. How does Disco help to address those concerns? You know, transparency is a major pain point. Um, one of the banes of my existence used to be trying to normalize this pricing model versus this, versus this service provider, versus this technology. We just throw that all out. We, we charge one flat amount per gig, includes analytics, includes processing, includes everything. And we work with you to get the volume of data that is being applied to that one flat cost per gig down. It, it eliminates that hide the ball gotcha mm -hmm. moment and it gives a lot of transparency and of course if someone wants a different model we're happy to accommodate that but in general straight simple honest mm -hmm. is um, it's really rewarding for our clients Got it. so what what cases what types of litigation case matters do you see as having some of the best benefits uh, of being migrated into your platform yeah, I think any case can. Mm -hmm. If you're a tiny company, it helps you be David versus Goliath. Mm -hmm. Even on a small data volume case, you can start getting insights and reduce the amount of time you're having to spend doing something maybe you can't charge back for. For a big, massive case, because we are in AWS and we were built on kind of convolutional neural networking, we're moving burden, we have such a, a robust uh, computational lift. Mm -hmm. Even we've had 150 million documents with hundreds of users and we still have sub one second page to page we are still lightning fast. And so whether it's a big case, a simple case, a complex case, there is a value proposition for almost anyone. So in, in terms of the types of law firms that are using your platform, do you see many smaller, medium-sized firms 
Tons. using your tool? Actually, tons. That was where we cut our teeth. The boutique, um, we started as a boutique law firm. Mm -hmm. We actually were a bunch of attorneys that were frustrated that all the tools were terrible. <laughs> and so they built their own. And so the foundation of Disco, we had a family of tons of boutique law firms that we were supporting, we still do to this day. The tool we built, though, had a longer vision and, and had an eye. It was built to be much bigger and more scalable, and as a result, that's why you're seeing us with major, you know, the Wilmer Hales of the world, very large firms and very large corporations, because the tool itself can scale up so mm -hmm. much. Great. Um, what are um, what are some of the challenges of working that law firms find that already have entrenched solutions? Like mm -hmm. there's other other review products out there, and if they really want to make the benefit of your platform, don't they have to kind of fully use it for the case? You know, it you can. I, I would say you probably don't want to split the baby with a case. If you're processing mm -hmm. with another tool, you're not going to get the same benefit as working with Disco. But you don't have to move your entire litigation portfolio to Disco day one. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people that are sunsetting legacy product and legacy platforms moving towards Disco, but it's not, I'm going to move every single case mm -hmm. today. It's go forward. We're going yeah. to start bringing in new cases. Um, there tends to be such a uh, improved experience and improved um, UI for the attorneys that they start to not want to use the other technology as much. So I, I know as a computer forensic expert, oftentimes we're going out initially collecting and forensically mm -hmm. preserving the data, but your product sounds like it would be ripe for a firm that does forensics that needs to collect different data from computers, possibly harvest just the email, filter the dates and times of the email to a PST, and mm -hmm. then they can take those PSTs and upload it into yep. your platform, correct? 100%, and we also, we've, we've productized some advanced ECA where we charge a much, much lower rate, so you get three months no cost hosting, it's half the usual rate, and you can do ECA for up to three months, and the goal of that is to like, let's whittle down to the most surgical, teeny tiny mm -hmm. laparoscopic piece of uh, data set that you can have. An example was we had uh, a 20 million document case and we were able to run the ECA, get it down to about 5.6 million mm -hmm. documents, run more calling, run our analytics, get it down to about 200,000 documents. And usually that would be when you have to review every single one, but we were able to, mm -hmm. with our workflow with Cal, get it down to 140,000 documents. And so if you think 50 bucks an hour, an attorney can only do 50 docs an hour, the cost savings is monumental. So as someone uses your platform and they start to tag and prioritize certain documents, your software learns yep. based on that tagging and helps find related concepts to those conversations 100%, and whatnot. Right? 100%. So, so really, um, the more that's reviewed as responsive, it's your AI engines are actually helping to find mm -hmm. similar concepts and whatnot so that important links aren't missed. 100%, and because we do automatic batching, what ends up happening is every new batch of documents a person gets, because we've applied this artificial intelligence, this continual active learning model, it is a more relevant subset of data, and people are able to go through it more fast, and they're sometimes able to get to a point where they can say, I've hit all my relevant information, the rest is not relevant, I'm going to sample it and statistically determine I don't have to review those last 100,000 documents that maybe aren't relevant, and right. it's pretty cool. Right, so in our next segment, we're going to be talking a little bit more about artificial intelligence, what the trends are in the industry impacting law and e-discovery. And then finally, we'll talk about some of the pitfalls of what companies, organizations, and law firms face if they don't embrace artificial intelligence to help make their review process more efficient. Well, thanks for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Right.